the channel. Guys, today is Italy <laughs> because I finally have all of the parts that we need to put the rear suspension of our Super Beetle together. Yes! This is what we are going to play with today. Almost everything here came out out of that Black Beetle that we were disassembling a few weeks ago. And some of those parts were sandblasted and powder coated. Some of them were cleaned and painted by me. And some of those beads right here are new. I saved what I could. What I couldn't save, I had to buy new. And holy crap, that was expensive. We have polyurethane bushings. We have new seals, new bearings, throttle cable, gearbox cable, new shocks, handbrake cables, new spring plate caps, new transaxles with CV joints. And the funny thing is that we didn't need the transaxle because we have these, but it was way cheaper to buy the whole set than the CV joints alone. Crazy, right? And new spring plates. I'm happy about them the most because they are adjustable. And now check this out. This is what came out out of that black beetle. And this is the new part. Find the difference. This is the best day ever. <laughs> okay, before putting anything to the chassis, we need to assemble a lot of stuff on the workbench. So let's do that. Okay, let's start with the backing plates for the drum brakes. They hold all of the parts for the rear brakes. So first we will mount the wheel cylinder, which goes right here. And we will secure it with that bolt from the other side. And now the brake adjusters. This is a new piece. This bolt was cleaned by me and painted as well. They work like that and they go into that hole right here. And there is another set of these that goes here. We will put a bit of grease in here and onto the thread because look at that. This is the old one. And I had a huge problem to take it out because of the rust. We want that to spin freely in the future. So grease is the answer. Now this piece, this goes into here. It is secured by a bolt, which is not here anymore, but I have one over there. We will put it in here like that. Yep. And this stops the handbrake cable right here. Now the brake shoes, I already installed those levers. This is the handbrake lever. So the end of the handbrake cable goes into here. And we will use this to hold that in place. Okay, this is how it looks in place. Okay, now this piece with the brake shoe at the same time. And now these two hold everything here from falling apart. So the longer one goes on the bottom and the shorter one is right here. And I've done it once and I think that it was tricky to do. So let's see. Okay, it wasn't that bad. Oh crap. Okay, we got it. First piece done. Now let's do this one. There we go. Oh my God. Look at that. Beautiful. We have one last thing to install here. This is a bleeding valve and I bought them new because the old ones were super rusty. And done. Okay, next mission, the diagonal arms. We will start with the bushings, then we will switch sides and we will mount the bearings. I think that the rubbers will go in without any problems, but I'm afraid that this will be a problem. And of course there is a special loop for this kind of bushings, so if you don't want squeaky squeaky in the future, use that. Okay, one side in. Okay, it's in. Now the moment of truth. And like I said, it doesn't want to go all the way in, so we will use a rubber mallet to help it a bit. Nope. Got it. 
holy crap, that was hard to do. I knew that it will be hard, but I didn't know that it will be that hard. Okay, next mission. As you can see, there are two different bearings in those arms. This one sits in the back and it sits really deep. So we will have to find a way to push it in. Unfortunately, I don't have a press to push it in. So we will find some other way, but this one sits very shallow in here. So it's super easy to push it in. They are dry, so before installing them, we have to pack them with grease. And for that job, I have a red grease, which is a grease for the bearings. See how it comes out? Okay, one of the bearings go all the way down there and it sits on that edge right here. And after that, we will have to secure it with the clip that sits in that groove right here. I was hitting the outer brace of the bearing and it went in very smooth. Now I think that we will push it a bit further using the old bearing, which is the same size as the new one. And after that, we will think what to do next. Well, look at that. We are at the bottom, so now we can secure it with that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, first bearing in place. I love it. Now it's time for that seal and we will once again use that old bearing. <laughs> the seal is in place, that was super easy to do. Now it's time for this big spacer. Well, that was easy. Okay, this side is almost done. Now let's do the other one. First of all, we need to put a lot of that grease in there and then we will put that big ass spacer in there and then we will mount the bearing. Boom, just like that. And now the axle, we have to push it in all the way through. Okay, it's in. A few minutes of hammering and the job is done. Now I will put that seal into that cover. And the next step will be connecting these two together. Just like that. Boom. Hello. We have only two parts left to install first this cover, but there is one thing with this cover. It has two divots on the sides and they have to face downwards. So this is the bottom of the diagonal arm. So they have to go that way. Yes, new bolts. Oh my god, I love it. We have a problem here because I have to torque this down to 43 foot pounds and my socket doesn't fit anymore. So I bought wrong bolts. Originally, they had smaller heads. So I think that I will have to replace them in the future. Guys, the last part. Okay, we got it. And this is how it all looks now and it's super heavy at the same time it's time for the second one you know what will happen right boom there we go guys they are ready i found a way to torque this down i found the socket with much thinner walls and they are now torqued to spec which is 43 foot pounds or 60 newts okay the diagonal arms are ready so let's mount them onto the chassis finally Okay, I don't know how to do it properly, but I think that we will mount the top part of the shock to the frame. We will put the diagonal arm on its place. We will secure it with that big ass ball. And after that, we will mount the bottom part of the shock to the diagonal arm. I think that this should work, right? <laughs> Now we have to 
torque to 87 foot pounds or 120 newts. So let's do that. Okay, got it. And now these. I will torque them to 43 foot pounds or 60 newts. It's in place. I am speechless, guys. For the first time, I'm just, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, holy crap, okay. Let's do the other side now. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Oof. Okay, guys, uh, now we are going to mount the handbrake cables and after that, we will mount the drums and then I'm gonna cry. Okay. okay, I will cry, but not because of what I see, but because of the mistake that I did. And now I have to take it all apart. <laughs> okay, okay, it's not that bad. We only have to take these off of the chassis because these go first. This part right here has to go behind that black part. So I have to take them off because it is impossible to put that on. Okay, so let's do the magic. Okay, I got it. So now we need to set the height of the rear suspension. So let's talk about that. As you probably noticed, that kind of suspension doesn't have springs. Why? Because this is the spring. This is called a torsion bar. And look at that. It has these splines on both ends. And this pipe right here is the housing for that. And somewhere in the middle, it has splines like that. So when you put the torsion bar Inside there, it looks something like that. See, now the torsion bar is in place and it won't move. And by the way, this is the spring plate and it holds the outer side of the torsion bar right here. And there is this tool. This is a magnetic protractor and it shows you the angle in degrees. And we are talking about the angle of that arm. So first we have to find the stock right height, which is 21 and a half degrees. So we will need to put all of that over there and by maneuvering this arm and with the help of that tool, we have to find that angle, 21 and a half degrees. But that's not all, because to do it correctly, we need to have the chassis exactly on the zero degrees. It has to be leveled. And check this out, boom, zero degrees. So that's good. Okay, before putting that in, we have to put some grease on both ends of the torsion bar. And look at that. There is an L here, which stands for the left side, which is the driver's side. They are directional. Okay, it's in. Okay, that's way too much. We have about 35 degrees now, so we have to take it out and move it up, I think. But it doesn't want to go out. Okay. Well, look at that. Okay, it took me a couple of tries, but we've got the stock right height set. And now the tricky part, because I don't like the stock height of the suspension, so I want to lower it. And for that, we have the chart. This will tell us what to do with the inner and outer splines, will tell us the difference between the stock and the new height in degrees and minutes, and of course, the difference in height of the rear suspension in inches and centimeters. And now, I don't want to go much lower because these are adjustable. So in the future, I will use that to lower the suspension without having to disassemble all of that. So I would love to go down about two inches or five and a half centimeters. So what I have to do, inner spline, nothing and outer spline plus one. What means that I have to move that arm one notch upwards. And that should give us eight degrees and 10 minutes difference between the stock and the new height. So 
Let's do that. Okay, we got it. And now we have 14 degrees. So we have a difference of seven and a half degrees. And that is not eight degrees and 10 minutes, but I think that this is not level. One turn of that bulk right here should probably fix that problem. Okay, I think that the height is set. We will do exactly the same thing on the other side, but now we have to mount all of the bushings and that arm on its place. First, we will mount this bushing. It goes in here. Of course, we will once again use that loop for polyurethane bushings. Okay, first we will mount these. At first, I wanted to put the bushing in and then the spring plate, but nope, it doesn't work like that. So it is all loop and now we will put that in and of course I have to find that height once again. Ooh, first try. Now this bushing needs to go right here. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> now the chrome cap. I knew it. I knew that this will happen. Okay, and now the tricky, tricky part, because we have to lift this part, which is under attention, obviously, because it's mounted now. Uh, so we have to lift it and push it that way, because there is a ledge on the frame behind this, on which this will rest in the future. So I tried with the jack and nope, it was lifting the whole chassis up. So I found this tool. This is for securing the spring when you are disassembling the strut. So I think that if I will grab it here and grab the frame right here, it should work, right? Let's do that. hard to admit that but I am an idiot you won't believe what I did so I was struggling to put that spring plate on its place for at least two hours and right after it landed on its place I noticed that it's on the wrong side yes and oh man I was pissed first of all I had to take it off once again and that wasn't easy Second of all, I scratched the frame and I scratched that spring plate. So <laughs> uh, I had to go home, uh, rest a while. I came back during the night and I did it. And now they are both done. Of course, you won't see those scratches because I painted them. After I did this one for the second time, that one was very easy to do. I had to do everything once again. So I had to set that stock right height and this time everything was correct. So I found that difference, which was, I think, eight degrees and 20 minutes, something like that. And of course the same numbers were on the other side. So everything is perfect now, boom. Okay, these are done and they look beautiful. So the next mission is right here. We already did that, so... Oh my God, it looks phenomenal. I can't believe that this is happening. As you can see, we are prepared for the last battle. These right here are the last parts that we have to mount. So let's start from these. These are the stoppers and they sit right here. Everything is of course looped, so it should go in without any problems. <laughs> As you can see, if your diagonal arm will go a bit too high, the stopper will hit that spot on the frame. Now the other side. Okay, got it. <laughs> that looks nice. 
Okay, now the handbrake cables and the drums. These are pretty easy to install. You have to put that end into that pipe right here. Of course, it doesn't want to go in. Okay, it's in. And to put the other end through that backing plate, I have to undo that clip right here. There we go. Now this should go on that level right here. Boom. And now the drum. Oh my God, this is crazy. Okay, let's mount the transaxle. Normally, I should put a lot of grease into the CV joint and under that rubber, but I'm pretty sure that we will have to take it off before installing the gearbox in the future, so I will mount it like that for now. Wow, that looks good. Okay, now the other side and we are done. Check this out. Guys, this is beyond my imagination. Wow, I'm extremely happy. The one thing that I don't like and I have to do something with it is the fact that there is a hole right here. And even though that there is a grease in there, I think that the moisture will find the way to get into the housing of the tension bar so i have to find some kind of caps that i will put on this here and of course on the other side but that's a mission for later of course now i'm happy with that i won't sleep tonight for sure wow that was a lot of work there were tears a lot of stress a few nights without sleep but we got it and this is beyond my imagination because I was thinking about it for years and I finally got it. <sighs> Remember, your project won't finish itself. And as you saw, sometimes you have to fail a few times, but we don't give up, we fight and we win, like I did. Thank you for today. Like, comment and subscribe and see you very shortly.